Hey, the madness continues. What's up? It's the Culture Detective here investigating your favorite albums and today I'm going to be doing a quick album review on the new Colin Stetson album, When We Were That What Wept For The Sea. So post-minimalist to avant-garde saxophonist Colin Stetson is back with a new album and he does post-minimalist music, which I don't talk about a lot in my channel, but essentially his music is usually saxophones and that's pretty much it. But that isn't the only thing that's going for in his music. Of course, we have the echoey haunting over tones, the noises, the clicky finger taps when he taps on the keys of the saxophones, his breathing, and with all these echoes and distortions, it forms a strange, surreal, gorgeous, compelling atmosphere that makes his music so interesting. And of course, aside from studio albums, he also does a lot of collaboration projects as well as film scores, most notably his collaboration with Ari Aster on the movie Hereditary, as well as last year with The Menu and also the upcoming anime show Uzumaki, uh, the indefinitely delayed Uzumaki. Where is the anime? Give it to me now. Where is the anime? But I respect it that they're taking their time with it, but Colin Stetson scoring for Junji Ito's Uzumaki, holy crap, this soundtrack is going to be amazing. But anyways, let's talk about this album. Essentially, he has returned with a new studio album, new solo project, uh, one hour and 10 minutes long, which is quite long, but it is really great, really beautiful, really solid. Not only do we have the amazing heavenly saxophones on this album, he also introduces a lot more interesting tones and sound palettes on this album. We have The Lighthouse 1 all the way through 5, which are tracks sprinkled all over the track list. The first Lighthouse track is a humble opening with droney saxophones and also these sandy, dusty sounds, which really make me feel like I'm being washed up on a beach, really matches the uh, album cover. And then we have the title track with his iconic circly, swirly saxophones, but then you can also get these heavenly bed of echoes in the back that make it feel really beautiful and really serene. And we have the track Infliction where it is moodier, the rhythm is slower and more unsettling. We also get these breathing noises and these hums. It's almost like he's singing through the saxophone itself. The track Passage is a bit of an ambient track with downtrodden keyboards and these shakes. The saxophones are there, but they're really, really, really subtle. So overall, it creates this bizarre atmosphere, which I really like. Following that, we have Long Before the Sky Would Open, which is an eight minute long track. On this track, he finds more experimental ways to play the saxophones, especially the middle parts of the track where the saxophone notes sort of cascade off of one another in a very beautiful way. And then we get these distortions and these vocals in the back, which are really well done. And we have One Day in the Sun, which is much more blissful than the other tracks. It's really warm, it's really sunny. It does feel a little redundant musically though. And then we have Fireflies, which is a speedy, fiery track. These saxophones are extra messy and sporadic on this track. And I can pretty much say the same for the track Rhythm, except this time it's a little bit more unsettling and off kiltered. Between these two tracks, we have The Lighthouse 2 and 3. We have some beautiful bagpipes from Scottish artist Breda Heimbill, as well as on The Lighthouse 3, we have uh, Irish, singer Irla O. Leonard with the poetry and the clear and calming pianos. Uh, he also makes uh, an appearance on the penultimate track, The Lighthouse 5, where he gives this beautiful spoken word piece with poetry on top of it. And the poetry is about sailing, it's about the winds, it's about the setting sun, literally describing the album cover, which I really like. I really love it when the music matches with the album cover. Anyways, we have uh, the surface and the light, which is more ethereal and dreamy. The keyboard sort of turns sour and a little bit nostalgic towards the end, which is really beautiful. And the Lighthouse 4 is a really unsettling ambient piece with these dark squealing saxophones straight out of the hereditary soundtrack. The track Behind the Sky introduces these noisy industrial clanging sounds, which 
adds a kind of a busy feel to the track that I really like. We have Raffle Seas Quiesque. I've never seen this word before. And this track is a bit of a redundant track, um, but not bad overall. And the album ends off with Safe With Me, which is kind of a slow, somber track with haunting background vocals. And it's kind of a calm after the storm moment for the album. So yeah, overall, a pretty solid album. A pretty great album as well. Beautiful saxophones, performances, beautiful sonic palettes. And uh, I'm giving this new Colin Stetson album a decent 8 out of 10. So have you listened to the new Colin Stetson album? Comments below. Let me know. Subscribe if you want more. And thanks for watching.